Hi guys, so how come even though every single cell in our bodies has the same genetic information, they express different proteins? Well today's video is going to cover the regulation of transcription and how that can have a role in the proteins produced. I'm going to take you through transcription factors and their role in gene expression, estrogen and how that can stimulate transcription factors and then we'll look at RNA interference at the end of the video and I'll also go through some exam questions to really help you apply this knowledge in the exam. So like, comment and subscribe and let's get into the video guys. So the regulation of transcription and translation next of all. So even though all of your cells contain exactly the same genes, they're not all switched on. A, that would be a massive waste of resources when you create proteins that the cell doesn't actually need. And B, it's a good thing because we don't want hair growing out of the corneas of our eyes, for example. Now, transcription is where DNA is made into mRNA, which then can be used to form a specific protein via translation. The transcription of target genes is only stimulated when specific transcription factors move from the cytoplasm into the nucleus. Next, the effect of estrogen on transcription. And finally, small interfering RNA, or siRNA, is a short double-stranded RNA that interferes with the expression of a specific gene. So they're the three key things I want you to take from this video. So, transcription factors first of all. Well, transcription factors are proteins which move into the nucleus from the cytoplasm and bind to DNA. They initiate transcription, which means they cause the formation of mRNA from DNA. Now, transcription factors attach RNA polymerase to the DNA, leading to the transcription of a specific gene. And most transcription factors are created in an inactive form and activated via the action of hormones or growth factors. Now this is an example here where we've got DNA represented at the top and we have a region of DNA here called the promoter and following the promoter we have a sequence of bases which will be our gene. Now in this example transcription which is the formation of mRNA will not occur. Now some transcription factors are known as activators and they enable the binding of RNA polymerase to stimulate transcription. So that's shown really nicely in this diagram where we've got our RNA polymerase binding to the promoter because of the transcription factors. And then the RNA polymerase can go along the DNA strand and form mRNA. So transcription does occur. Now other transcription factors are known as repressors. And these prevent transcription by binding to the start of the target gene and preventing the binding of RNA polymerase. So here we can see the transcription factors. And because they've bound there to the start of the gene, transcription will not occur. So you need to know the difference between those two, activators versus repressors. So estrogen stimulates a transcription factor next of all. Now we can see here I've got estrogen located here and I've also got estrogen located at the top here to just demonstrate what's going to happen. Now estrogen is lipid soluble and therefore can diffuse directly through the phospholipid bilayer and I've shown that at the top right here with this image. You can see we've got two layers of phospholipids and the estrogen can just freely diffuse across them due to it being lipid soluble. Now when a gene is switched off the site on the transcriptional factors that bind to the DNA is blocked by an inhibitor preventing transcription. We can see when estrogen binds to the transcription factor, this will form an estrogen-estrogen receptor complex. So estrogen binds to a transcription factor known as an estrogen receptor. Now the estrogen-estrogen receptor complex can then enter the nucleus and bind to DNA. This complex will bind DNA at a specific site at the start of the target gene. And we can see there, we've represented the DNA as our double helix, and we've got our estrogen, estrogen receptor complex there. Now the estrogen, estrogen receptor complex can then act as an activator, which we mentioned earlier, and initiate transcription by facilitating the binding of RNA polymerase 
Again, an enzyme we mentioned earlier. Now this all, however, depends on which cell is being targeted and the gene that's being acted upon. In some cases, the complex can actually act as a repressor, so it's not as cut and dry as this seems. Hormones have specific impacts on different cells. RNA interference, next of all. Well, small interfering RNA can prevent gene expression. It interferes with translation. Now, small interfering RNA, or siRNA, is a type of small double-stranded RNA that stops mRNA from being translated. siRNA associates with proteins in the cytoplasm, unwinds, and binds to a specific mRNA molecule. So I've represented here the unwound and single-stranded siRNA there, but remember it will have been double-stranded to begin with, split apart, and then bound to the mRNA. Now, just remember here that we've got complementary base pairing occurring, and because it's RNA, it has uracil instead of thymine. Now, the proteins, which the enzyme is associated with the siRNA, so this enzyme will cut the mRNA into small fragments stopping translation at the ribosome. Now I've represented that here with these scissors. The mRNA will be cut into fragments preventing translation. Now miRNA next of all, you need to be aware of this, but what is it? Well it stands for microRNA and in plants microRNA stops translation in a similar way to small interfering RNA by breaking down mRNA. Now in mammals, however, microRNA or miRNA is often not completely complementary to the target mRNA. So because of this, it is therefore less specific and can target different types of mRNA from different genes. Now miRNA in mammals leads to the mRNA being blocked rather than broken into fragments. So the enzyme blocks translation rather than breaking down the mRNA. So let's have a look at how this can come up in the exam. Question one, estrogen is a steroid hormone. Steroid hormones are hydrophobic. Explain why steroid hormones can pass directly through the cell surface membrane and that's worth two marks. So pause the video and have a go at this question now. Now the answer is one mark for saying lipid soluble. So estrogen is lipid soluble. Second mark, therefore it can diffuse directly through the phospholipid bilayer. And because phospholipid is underlined, that means AQA need you to include it to get the mark. Drop a like on the video if you want more exam tips. Question two. In the cytoplasm, estrogen binds to a specific estrogen receptor, which is a protein. Okay, so think about proteins and shapes and all that good stuff. Suggest and explain why estrogen binds to a specific receptor. Pause the video, we'll go through the answer. So the answer is one mark for the estrogen slash receptor have a specific tertiary structure or shape. So you've got to include the term tertiary because AQA have underlined it. So you could have said the receptor has a specific tertiary structure or estrogen has a specific tertiary structure. Either of those will get you the mark because there's the forward slash there. Now your second mark is for saying they are complementary. The estrogen is complementary to the specific estrogen receptor. That's your second mark. So question three next of all. The binding of estrogen to the estrogen receptor changes the shape of the receptor. The estrogen-estrogen receptor complex now enters the nucleus and stimulates gene expression. Suggest how the receptor could stimulate gene expression, and that's worth two marks. Pause the video here, and we'll go through the answer. So the answer is, the estrogen receptor is a transcription factor for one mark. Your second mark is for saying that it binds to the DNA. You could just say DNA, or you could be more specific, and you could say that estrogen will bind, the estrogen receptor will bind to the promoter. And finally, you would say it stimulates RNA polymerase. 
So guys, I hope you've got some value from this video and learned how to get more marks in the exam. Like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Good luck with your revision.